Welcome back to Mr. Hayden's Ag Lessons. I am Mr. Hayden and you're watching episode 15, Seeding Grass for Your Yard. Welcome back crew. I hope you're uh, living your best life here during your quarantine time and we've caught a little bit of cold weather here in Northeast Iowa, but I don't want you to think it's too late to start some grass for your yard. So we are talking about a spring uh, pro a process that a lot of you might be going through right now, whether it's uh, seeding an entire area of your yard that is newly established or just patching up those spots where you might have had some snow removal that got a little wild, okay? So um, sometimes the best time in Iowa is to seed in the fall. And the reason for that is the seeds can actually germinate in the warm soil and then they go dormant after developing a root system. But here we're gonna just talk about spring seeding and give you some options and some things to think about. So first off, one, one piece of information you might think about is, hey, I want a yard right now. Well, if that's your most uh, wanted desire, then you should probably purchase sod. Now the, the obvious downfall of sod is it is gonna be more expensive. It is established uh, uh, turf grass that has already been grown, it's been cut, delivered to your house, unrolled by usually landscaping professionals and then laid out strategically to not have any gaps. So uh, the biggest thing there is usually cost uh, in terms of a, a, a con, you could say. So a lot of you homeowners that prefer to do it a little bit on the cheaper side, um, you might be saying, where do I start? And the way you start with that is deciding, first off, how many square feet of yard are you planning on doing, okay? Well, what are you looking at? Uh, is the area that you're planning on seeding, is it uh, have a lot of shade? Does it have full sun? Um, what is the soil like? And so those are some questions you might think of. And what are you gonna use that area for? Is it gonna be high traffic area or pretty low impact in terms of grass, okay? And so when you, when you think about what you're gonna do first, you're gonna prepare the soil. And what that means is you're gonna try to churn up or till up the top four to six inches of the soil. Now you don't need extremely deep, deep soil because uh, grass has a fibrous root system. So the majority of those roots are gonna stay about six to 12 inches in the soil. Um, and, but you do want to turn up that topsoil so you're working with a very porous uh, topsoil. You don't want something that's very hard and firm. Uh, grass seed is a very, very small seed and it's going to have a hard time germinating if, if it can't get into the soil to begin with. So if you don't have adequate soil, you could look at possibly bringing in some topsoil. That, that might get a little more expensive than you, you would like, but uh, you do have to prepare the seed bed in a way that's going to help those seeds germinate. Um, and then next off, if you're looking in Iowa, we have a very cool spring and also a cool fall. Um, our, uh, our ability to grow some very nice looking yards is dependent on the, the amount of rainfall we get, but also our growing season. Uh, the types of grasses we use mainly in Iowa, you're going to see Kentucky bluegrass, uh, different types of fescue, and some people prefer a perennial ryegrass mixture. Um, these can be purchased at your local like Menards, Norby's, Home Depot, things of that nature. Um, you can buy it in a 50 pound bag. Um, those different seeds, like we said, they're all perennial plants. They'll come back year after year. Um, but the, the tricky part is getting them started. And, and like I said, you want to do it when the weather is cool. They don't like extreme heat. But right now when we're in the 30s, this is a little bit on the cold side for uh, any seeds to even think about germinating. A soil temperature around 50 degrees is going to be more helpful when we're talking about grass germination. Okay. And so uh, when you think about in the springtime, we usually do get a lot of rain. So it's trying to balance that time where you can get out in the area and prepare. There is our first sump pump commercial of the day. We're going to hear from Shields Landscaping and Lawn Care, mowing down the competition and burying the body. So when you think about that, that seed that you're going to plant in your yard, you do have to prepare the soil, but you don't want it to be extremely muddy. We're going to have a hard time. Uh, a lot of people, they might choose to broadcast the seed across their yard. Uh, walk behind broadcaster might run you between 50 and 60 bucks potentially. And what that allows you to do is it gravity feeds the seed and a spinning disc shoots that seed evenly throughout your yard. The nice thing is you can alter or adjust the, the, uh, the, type, the amount of seed that comes out. So if you want a, a heavy seeding, um, most people would recommend not overdoing it in terms of seed per square foot. Um, you want to make sure that the grass isn't competing against each other for, for water and nutrients. So then we're looking um, right here for grass selection. I did talk about that Kentucky bluegrass, tall fescue, or uh, different types of fescue, perennial ryegrass. And then the actual planting application, you actually want to only incorporate the seeds about a quarter to a half inch in the soil. And that goes back to the small size of the, of the seed for grass. Um, it doesn't take a lot of soil coverage for the seed to germinate. So we're talking just barely enough that you can't see the seed. Um, you, you shouldn't see it. A lot of people like to broadcast it and then to actually get it into the soil. 
If you take a rake and you go back and forth, you want to try and rake as evenly as possible and go in multiple different directions. You don't want to focus on one area and push the seed out in, into one area and kind of pile all together in a different area. Um, but that does, uh, when you finally do think about your grass and your yard, uh, I, I would like to say I do have a cow that's helping me uh, keep my grass pretty well uh, down, and he's a pretty he's a good cow mower. Is uh, I should say a lawn mower is, is the actual word I was looking for there. Um, but after we get that seed planted, a big thing is water, water, water. All right, so that soil has to stay moist. Okay, if you let the top part of that soil dry out at all, that's going to provide a layer that could crust over and make it hard for that seed to germinate. You're going to feel like you're overdoing it with the water. But like I said, that grass seed, it needs water to help break the seed coat and to help initiate growth of the seed, but also to keep that soil moist. Uh, another big part of that is um, you definitely don't want to walk on it right after you've seeded, up, seeded it. So you want minimal traffic, usually no traffic at all. So you should not walk across an area. I know it's tricky because you want to go out there and see how your yard is, is growing, but please try to do it just looking at the edge, things like that. You're going to need some type of sprinkler that applies a, a, a very small mist or small droplets of water. You don't want something that shoots a lot of heavy quantity of water at one time because that's going to either crust the soil over or it's going to uh, disturb the seed so much that it won't be able to grow in the first place there. Um, so we talked about not letting that, uh, that uh, grass seed or the soil dry out. You know, here in that late April is a very small window to even have a shot for seeding your yard down. Uh, when we hit the late months, uh, late May, early June, it's getting too hot. That seed is on the borderline of thinking, do I really want to germinate and grow or not? And then we all know that in our, our July and August months, a lot of our yards, they go dormant. They turn brown. That doesn't mean that the entire plant dies. The roots are always alive, but the top part, it goes dormant. It stops growing vegetatively. And then uh, it waits till those cooler uh, early September, late August temperatures to uh, green back up. Okay. And so we've, we've talked a lot about some of our, our basics there. The ideal height for grass, when you first establish it, the first time you mow it, you want to wait until it's about three to three and a half inches. And then after that, once you have it established, uh, between two to three inches is a common mowing height. And the reason for that is it allows you to walk nicely through your yard, but also uh, helps control weeds. Uh, mowing is a way that it could kill some of the weeds vegetatively, you're not going to kill the root system. Um, we did talk in a previous lesson about uh, weed control in the yard. Some of the main weeds you might see might be crabgrass, you might have some thistle, some dandelion. You really have to understand the life cycle of those weeds to be able to control them properly. Um, and so uh, when you think about, uh, if you're thinking about starting up a business after the quarantine, you know, a lot of land care or lawn care businesses, uh, they make some pretty good money. They're, they're almost raking it in, okay? And so they might rake in those grass clippings. Uh, one thing, if you're using grass clipping from your yard and maybe in a garden, make sure that you don't have any uh, herbicide that would have residue on it that would maybe um, damage your garden plants. It would not have resistance to that. You're gonna be spraying a, a broadleaf type herbicide on your yard to keep the weeds down. And that, that's a lot of uh, the same family that a lot of your vegetable crops would be. Um, so we discussed a little bit there. Um, and then in terms of fertilizer, a lot of people ask, well, how do I keep that? I want that yard to look that nice, dark green, luscious, uh, just almost like a carpet. Well, the main nutrient that your grass is going to rely on is nitrogen. And when you read a fertilizer bag, the, the numbers on the fertilizer bag correspond to the amount of nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. But by far and away, the most important nutrient would be that nitrogen number right there, okay? So when it says 30, 10, 10, what that means is, is that the 10 pound bag of fertilizer, 35, 30% of it is nitrogen, so three of those pounds, 10% is uh, phosphorus and 10, and 10, or excuse me, one pound is phosphorus and one pound is potassium. That would be a 10 pound bag of fertilizer. Some people prefer to uh, broadcast it with a pelleted method or some people like a soluble fertilizer where you mix it up in water and then you spray that water uh, that has that fertilizer in it across your yard. If it is a water soluble fertilizer, it's gonna be more readily available for plants to uptake. Whereas that pelleted material, it might take half the growing season to break down into a form that plants are readily able to absorb. Um, and then, like we said, just keep on maintaining that yard, that, that nice dark green color. You can add fertilizer throughout the year, but you're going to get your most bang for your buck after it's established in the springtime there. Okay. And that is our second sump pump of the day. We're going to hear from Dollar General. It's like someone dared us to run a store with only two people maximum. 
And so uh, I hope I did uh, tell you a little bit about our, our seeding grass in your yard. Hopefully this is something that if you're thinking about doing, you feel a little bit more confident. There's a lot of good materials. If you go to Iowa State Extension and you type in seeding the yard to grass, uh, you can learn a lot more details. So with that, I appreciate you watching episode 15. Who would have guessed we would have made it this far? And we'll see you next time.